Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a little SmackDown review. A decent little show this week, folks. There, some good old wrestling. Um, Brock Lesnar kicked off the show there. Brock with charisma, folks, cutting decent promos. Years and years we thought Brock couldn't talk. You know what I mean? Not only is he genetically and athletically superior, but turns out he can talk as well, folks. A bonus. I mean, um, never fails to impress Brock Lesnar, folks. He was pissed off that he was attacked at the big MSG house show. They showed cool footage of this there, Roman beating him up on the steel steps and stuff. Acknowledge me with the belts there. Brock was pissed off about this. He said you drew blood. Nobody draws first blood from Brock Lesnar, whatever. And he said he was there for blood. He wanted to make Roman bleed or whatever. Heyman comes out, he says, Roman Reigns, not there tonight or whatever. He says it's for Brock's own protection. Brock says if... Roman's not there. Who's going to protect you? And then he starts chasing Paul Heyman there. Heyman reacting or whatever, running in the back. There was security guards. Stop him or whatever. And the guards, you know, they slowed down Lesnar just enough for Heyman to get away in the car there, Brock was chasing the car. Some good stuff or whatever. Good shit there. I enjoyed it, folks. Wrestling 101 there. First match, Sheamus and Ridge Holland defeated Big E and Kofi Kingston. Two big pieces of news came out of this. Number one, Big E was sadly injured, a, a belly to belly on the outside or something. Broke his neck. He made a video, he's in the hospital with a, a thing around his neck. Apparently it's broken. We don't know how long he's out for. He says he can move his fingers. I don't know if it's a two year deal, six months. You know, it sounds serious enough. He says, don't worry about it. But we don't really know uh, the full extent of it there. But hopefully he recovers and comes back there. Um, another big piece of news there. Sheamus and Ridge hauled in. They had help um, in this match due to outside interference. From a newcomer, Butch, ladies and gentlemen, formerly known as Pete Dunn there. So, <laughs> Pete Dunn, little British guy or whatever, they changed his name simply to Butch. And he's now a part of Seamus' gang or whatever. So the people online are complaining, just like Walter Gunter there. People on Twitter, they're trying to react uh, the way they did to Walter. It's not as big this time there. It's not like, it doesn't have as much traction there. But, you know, of course on Twitter, there's a million wrestling fans Crying for the name Butch or whatever. Butch! People, imagine that, people who don't understand. Butch! Really? Butch! 
people overreacting. AEW fans who don't even apparently watch the product. They watch it every week there, but it's them who care the most about Pete Dunne. Because honestly, do you really care about Big Pete? Do you care about Butch or <laughs> whatever? You no, know, no, you don't there. Okay, he's an okay little wrestler, but he's five foot tall. Weird face, the weird stuff with the mount guard there. Butch. I am Butch, Mike. You know what I mean? Just a, a little weird looking guy with a singlet. The boring joint manipulation or whatever, you know what I mean? If he, if he gets his career extended there, they have an idea for him. They call him Butch. He has to pretend to be Irish for a few years. At least he's not getting released. He's still making money. He's now on the main roster. He's going to make more money than he's ever made before. Who gives a fuck if his name is Butch? It's a little weird, you know what I mean? Um, but um, he kind of does look like a, a manly woman a little bit, you know what I mean? Um, but, um, you know, at least he still has a job. Maybe it leads to something, you know what I mean? Maybe he's going to get released in a few months. We'll see, folks. The Butch era. I mean. So um, then we had Corbin, Madcap Moss, Jinder, and Shanky. They attacked Drew McIntyre four on one. Drew was still able to beat them all up or whatever, and... He did stuff with his sword there. What you call filler, folks. Charlotte was cutting a promo on Ronda Rousey there. She's going to make her tap, stuff like this. The promo was good enough there. Later on, Charlotte attacked Ronda in the parking lot. She slammed her on top of a car. She had her in some kind of face submission there. <laughs> some kind of face thing on the hood of a car. Rhonda didn't tap or whatever there, but this was good. The bit there backstage. I don't know why Charlotte was wearing some kind of weird one-piece leather bodysuit or something there. I don't know what the hell this outfit was in the parking that she was wearing there, but um, this little backstage brawl was okay, I guess. Second match, Rick Boogs defeated Jey Uso. Um, he came out with a bandage around his knee because they attacked them last week. Um, Jimmy Uso says, hey, Peg Leg, if you can beat Jey Uso, you guys can get a tag team title match at the pay-per-view at Mania there. Rick Boogs, he takes off the bandage or whatever, and he just basically outpowered and outclassed Jey Uso there. He... He's a bit of a goofball, this Boogs, but he's a big fucking guy. Strong like a bull, you know what I mean? When he had him in the suplex and he's going down on one knee and stuff, it takes some strength to do shit like this. Strong, this guy. Um, so Rick Boogs wins the match. So there's the SmackDown tag team match at WrestleMania. After the match, Jimmy Uso with the guitar. It looked like behind the head almost there. Bang! With the guitar. Nice guitar shot there. The Usos were entertaining this week, I thought. 
Third match, Sasha and Naomi defeated Natalia and Shayna Baszler. You had Carmella on the outside there, just throw away filler there, but it's expected you get some filler on the wrestling show, obviously, there, and um, it's to promote the tag team match at, at Mania, so it did its job, I guess. Match wasn't good there, but Pat McAfee was on commentary before the main event. Austin Theory comes out. They get into a brawl. Theory smacks him. McAfee on top of the table jumps on Austin Theory, gets some shots in, and this looked like a good intense little brawl or whatever. He did a good job here. Both of them there, it kind of felt a bit like a real scuffle slash fight or whatever there. So good job here to promote the match. And in the main event, Ricochet defeated Sami Zayn there. Little rematch for the Intercontinental title, an okay little match. Overall, I thought this was a good show. Their Brock was good. Charlotte and Ronda. Um, what else did we have here? Their Pat McAfee. The main event was decent. He had a bit of filler there, but overall, some strong segments towards heading into WrestleMania. There's some decent wrestling. Overall, a good show there. It's sad what happened to Big E. You know what I mean. Hopefully, it gets better soon enough there. I thought this was a good show. Um, I'll give it a, a 7.25 out of 10. Why not, folks? Way better than AEW, folks. Way better there. And this is coming from a fan of pro wrestling. I'm not biased, folks. Smackdown a million times better than Dynamite there. You know what I mean? So there you have it, folks. 7.25 out of 10. Decent build-up towards Mania there. I'm excited, folks. It's fun right now to be a wrestling fan. Except when you watch AEW, then it's a little weird and stuff. The fans, AEW fans there, but mainly the build up and stuff. I'm having a good time. I'm having fun. Having fun. Until next time. Peace. I've moved to tears here. Yeah.